Hey guys, what's up? Amy P. Jean here. Thanks for stopping by and checking out my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. So today I have a super fun special effects makeup look featuring, oops, pretend we don't see it in the back here, featuring an amazing prosthetics from RBFX Studios um, out in LA. I've never done a prosthetic like this before. I'm really excited about it. And it is, of course, a leprechaun um, special effects makeup look for St. Patty's Day. And this is also a collab with my lovely LJ out in Cork, Ireland. She's going to be doing um, the Mrs. Leprechaun look and I did the Mr. one for those of you that like special effects stuff. Again, this is not my usual thing. This is new for me. So um, don't go too hard on me, but oh my god, I had a lot of fun with the contacts just to pull it all together. So anyways, if you guys like the drill, you know, um, if you guys like this video, you know the drill, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. It would be thrilled to me. And let me know what future tutorials you want to see in the comment box below. And go check out LJ's This is St. Patrick, Mrs. Leprechaun look on her channel. I'll link the video for her channel down below. Send her lots of love and let her know, um, or give her lots of love and let her know that I sent you. Um, I'm proud you're doing crazy things because of this hat. Anyways, um, look at that prosthetic. The edging is amazing. Anyways. Okay, let's get into this Leprechaun makeup tutorial. Okay, so I'm starting off with my RBFX prosthetic here. It's actually a witch prosthetic, but I'm using it for a Leprechaun. And I'm going to start by kind of just holding it up to my face and just um, getting an idea of where everything is going to be placed before I actually commit to gluing it down. Because once it's glued down with a beautiful prosthetic like this, like super high-end expensive, the edges are so thin that if you mess it up, you're kind of screwed. So you want to make sure you're in the right place. So this is my first time doing this, bear with me, but I was taught that you will start from the center of the prosthetic. So I'm putting spirit gum on my nose and then I'm going to tap, um, tap it to activate it. And I'm also going to put it on the prosthetic and tap it on the prosthetic before I place it um, on my nose. And then once it's on my nose, I'm going to kind of like flatten out the rest of the prosthetic around where I want it to go before I really commit and push in the glued down a little bit. So that way I have a little bit of wiggle room to make sure that the rest of it is going to go on my face properly. And now I'm going to dance around like a turkey because I am a complete weirdo. Anyways, okay, now for the rest of it. So we're going to fold back the parts that we have not glued on. Again, center working our way outwards on the skin, on the prosthetic, tapping the skin, tapping the prosthetic, and then flattening from the center out. This is how you're going to get the flattest edges if you work it this way. And again, we're just going to keep doing that along the eyes, um, along the sides of the cheeks, and on the chin portion as well. And then um, I'm going to go back in to the little bits that I find I didn't flatten well or put enough spirit gum on and put a little bit underneath those edges and also on top of them. I don't think you're supposed to do that, but I find it just glues them down nice and flat. And I was pretty happy with how this worked. If I like took more time with it, I um, probably could have got all the edges like perfectly flat so that they would completely blend into my skin because they're so thin and beautiful. However, I knew, <coughs> excuse me, I cheated because I knew that I was going to be putting a beard on my chin and wearing a hat. <laughs> so I didn't care. Now because we want the sticky the stuff all over our face, as, we want to um, powder it. I'm the average Carlo effects makeup artist. Powder work. here, that's just so that uh, the spirit gum is no longer sticky for when we go in to paint it. And I'm just going to drown myself in this to make sure it's in all the crevices and anywhere we could have um, put the powder, really. Or sorry, put the spirit gum, I should say. So all the edges, basically. Now I'm going in with my Krylon crease paints. I made this kind of yellow color here and I'm just going to color basically my entire face with this and then I do a little bit of blending at the edge which you can see here and it completely covers the edge of the prosthetic and my skin so that it all looks like one piece. I am so impressed with this prosthetic. I've never had a real prosthetic before like this. My mind was absolutely blown. Um, unfortunately because of the look I was doing wearing a hat and something with facial hair I was adding I didn't need to blend the edges too perfectly. I would have liked to have just for the sake of practice, I guess, but I was rushed, and because of what the final content delivery was for this didn't require it, I didn't spend the time on it. But you can see at the forehead here, you can't see the beginning of my skin 
and the prosthetic. It's quite amazing. Anyway, so I'm just using a small brush and painting my whole face with this color, including my eye area and my lips. And then I'm going back in with that loose powder and pressing it, not swiping, because we don't want to disrupt anything. Pressing it all over the face, again drowning myself in this. This grease paint is super greasy and sticky and will transfer and we don't want that. So this is just going to set it so that we can continue our shading on top of it. So now I'm going to go in with a black eyeshadow and a small angled brush. You can use a detail brush or whatever you want. And I'm going to go and just put this in the deepest folds on the mask. And um, once we're done doing that, or sorry, the mask on the prosthetic, uh, we're going to go in with this greeny shade. Uh, I forget what it's called. You could use Coquette for that. And we're going to blend that into the black around the edges on the raised part. So it looks like a shadow going into the deepest part of the creasing being black. And then you have the kind of green brown just above that so it looks like a tapered out shadow. Um, I'm not going to bother highlighting this prosthetic for whatever reason. I felt like it wasn't necessary. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to go do that on all the other crevices with the green and you can use the same brush or a different brush and you kind of want to blend it out and go a bit softer whereas with the black you wanted to do a sharper line to really draw attention to the depth of that wrinkle. Now I'm going in with my good old stippling brush and a darker brown grease paint and we're just going to lightly stipple some texture to look kind of like pores onto the cheeks. Uh, the center of the forehead, the nose, and the chin, where we generally look a little bit more porous. And if you find that was a little too dark, you can go back in with a lighter shade on top of that to soften it a little bit. Just, um, it's fun to add some texture to the skin. And then I'm going to powder all of that one more time so that's not transferring absolutely everywhere all over again. I realized I missed these super crucial to like aging, creepy, witchy makeup um, wrinkles here around my mouth. So I'm going in with that greenish shade again and just feathering in lots of little fine lines in there and going a little bit darker in certain areas just to make it deeper looking. <laughs> it's finding the eye area a little clean and flat so I'm going in with a dark brown shadow to kind of line the eyes and just make them look a little bit more dark and moody and I'm also going to blend that into the black that we put in the bags under the eyes just to make the bags look more prominent again. Um, I'm also going to go in and add a little bit of a purple shadow under there to just make the skin look thinner and kind of a little bit more sickly. And then go in with my finger to just smudge it out because I don't really care about this part too, too much. I just want to look kind of haggard and tired and gross and the prosthetic does a lot of the work for you there, which is great. Okay, now for the beard. So I'm using crepe hair. You can get this in Toronto at the movie makeup shop at Complexions College or the Makeup Forever Pro Loft. Um, you can get it on Amazon as well. I'm just going to go ahead and peel it apart to get the curls kind of out of it and then I'm going to apply spirit gum where I want it, tap it out to activate it, and then push on the beard. And then we're going to do this over and over on your whole face until you get the shape of the beard you want. And I'm also going to do it on my eyebrows. This was a lot trickier because I realized you should have gone in in one piece instead of trying to build on the eyebrow. But like by adding more on top of more, it's harder to stick that way, but whatever, it still turned out okay. So I'm kind of just like molding the shape of the brow there, and that's that. Then off camera, in case anyone was wondering, I popped in some contacts and I switched together a bunch of different food coloring um, varieties to get like this gross kind of oozy, charcoal -y, infected mouth situation. Well, that's it for today, you guys. So I really hope you enjoyed this Leprechaun makeup tutorial. I had a great time making it for you. Please leave me lots of words of support because this was challenging for me. Oh, my beard's falling off because I got lazy doing it on. Anyways, hope everyone has a wonderful, fun, and safe St. Patrick's Day. And um, give the video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you want to see below. And go see um, LJ's channel for her Mrs. Leprechaun or Mrs. St. Patrick. And uh, let her know I sent you. Alrighty, until next time. Take care. you find anything today? Oh, oh, excuse me. Can you please point me to the Lucky Charms? Oh, Jesus. No. Don't you?
Choose Cassie. Don't choose Cassie. Oh, come on. Oh. If you think I'm sexy. And oh, wait, he's Scottish. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Pig, so go cry on your huge villa. <laughs> I'm going to offend all the Irish out there quoting Mike Myers and uh, So I Married an Axe Murderer. Scottish dad. <laughs> oh, hey there. Didn't see you looking at me from across the room. <laughs> oh, this is so painful. Oh, God. Oh, it's this whole part here. How am I going to get this off me? Oh, my God. Fuck my life.